Rise of Cyber is still a very new game, so I think it's going to be helpful for us to go over all of the combatants. To make it a little bit more fun, I'm also going to rank them. So here's my first iteration of the Rise of Cyber double S tier list. Death Eye breaks the enemy's defense with unsurpassed efficiency. He can bypass 100% of an enemy's defense within two turns. As he breaks them down, he also ignores additional defense with his skills. This allows for maximum setup damage without much setup. A tier. Ember and Ashes tremendously lowers the enemy's damage output by reducing their attack and critical rate. His ultimate gives the team a maximum health boost and he ignores one third of all single target damage. Sort of like a dual tank that will increase your whole team's survivability. B tier. Oracle is who you bring whenever you want absolute offense at the cost of defense. She gives allies gratuitous damage buffs but breaks their defense in return. She's the ultimate staple for a glass cannon team, yet still viable for tankier teams due to her supplemental healing. Her Venom causes debuffed enemies to suffer even more bonus damage. A tier. A pad is another defense breaker with a larger focus on multiple enemies. She can ignore a portion of the enemy team's defense with an AoE. Even her basic attack is a defense breaking multi hit. She ignores more over time and can launch a nuke at an enemy that bounces to new enemies on kill. B tier. Dirty Gold is a dirty thief that steals buffs from the target. She has health exchange with her ultimate allowing you to save your most damaged ally by stealing the enemy's health. She restores energy for the team as enemies cast skills, and all of the buffs she steals are transferable to allies. A tier. Matrix Runner starts weak but climbs in power over time by absorbing the enemy's attack stat. Her single target nuke has a chance to recast two extra times, and her AoE scales with how much energy the enemy team is missing. Allies casting skills now also cause follow-up basic attacks. She's a bizarre gem of a character. B tier. The prosthetic doctor is pushing the limits of what we can do in these gacha games, so buckle up. At the match start and throughout the fight, the doctor stacks energy circuits. The circuits buff the doctor's attack while using prosthetic limbs or his defense whenever he's not. The doctor can activate these prosthetic limbs. Doing so allows him to explode the limb for AoE damage. His playstyle boils down to constantly self-buffing and periodically doing a burst AoE. D tier. Augmenter completely mutilates herself to boost her own damage. Her damage increases dramatically as she self-buffs, but it takes some time. She would be a key player in bleed-reliant teams if she didn't consume a fifth of her own HP every single move. On top of that, she has Bloodlust, which is an attack buff, but it has a defense trade-off. So in any fight where you're going to be receiving damage, aka almost all of them, she will need mad support just to stay alive. F tier. Data Hub does what Augmenter is trying to do. She also causes bleed on multiple skills. Data Hub also comes with the Frostmark debuff though, which is great for lowering the enemy's attack. As she gets more astral power, her damage increases dramatically, and I'd say she's a proper pick for any bleed team. B tier for a bleed team, or D tier. Vanguard has an AoE that deals damage based on his max health, and also has a chance to silence. This is a perfect round 1 ability that could potentially sway the outcome of battle. He vastly increases your team's defenses and gene power while lowering the enemy's gene power. A tier. Vermilion Dawn is the perfect burner. Even the basic attack applies two stacks of burn. The burns also last for three turns. Her single target skill easily multi-hits an enemy for maximum stacks, and the burns apply a kindling buff to VD, making the burns do even more damage. Finally, she can consume all burn stacks on an enemy to trigger all of the burns immediately. As a standalone burn unit, this is still an A tier, but if we're talking about a fully synergized burn team, then she's a double S. Aquila is another burn-oriented combatant. Her crit damage increases the more burns the enemy has. She has follow-up attacks and can start racking up damage immediately. She's another unit capable of maxing burn stacks with a single skill. B tier by herself, and A tier on a burn team. Starring Diva is the queen of support. She has all of the basics a good support needs. Heals, cleanse, the ability to ignore death itself. Yes, her ultimate actually gives an ally a permanent buff, allowing them to instantly revive after death. You can even use this skill multiple times. Having her on your team may as well just be unlocking the easy mode of the game. S tier. Neuromancer is employed as a setup for boss nuking teams. Her electric current debuff acts as a complementary defense break, and her skill increases the enemy's damage taken by 75%. In a way, she's a requirement to see the highest potential damage in the game. B tier. Ghost is of course the OPE girl that's required of every cyberpunk game. Her restrain debuff stops the enemy from acquiring energy, which forces them to basic attack. Her AoE drains even more energy with a stun. Her single target skill that restrains also causes weakened genes, and it only costs one energy. She multiplies turns for your team while dividing them for the enemies. 
S tier. Suzaku is one of the ideal burn and bleed oriented combatants. Her burns cause bleeds and every attack can do it. Her Blazing Aegis passive also gives an extra layer of defense, so her tankiness combined with her debuff output makes her an excellent candidate for any team. A tier. Zangetsu is the ideal defense breaker for bosses. Her entire kit revolves around lowering the enemy's defense repeatedly. With enough time, she can remove all of the enemy's defense, effectively allowing your whole team to ignore it. Her ultimate is a nearly 2000% multiplier that either insta-kills enemy below 20% or adds an extra 50% damage to unkillable foes. B tier. Biako is a top tier nuker. Her basic attack performs added effects including defense break and healing reduction. This makes her perfect for dealing with all of these AoE taunting tanks. She applies marks to enemies that increase her damage and it increases even more whenever the mark targets die. She can counterattack and her ultimate makes her temporarily invincible, allowing for maximum unchecked destruction. S tier. Duke Silver is a guardian type. He absorbs a portion of the damage his allies take. His basic attacks cleanse himself of debuffs and supplies himself a shield. Imagine the Braum shield from League of Legends. He uses that for his ultimate. He's another tank with an AoE taunt passive. He consumes his own HP to apply shields, which is good whenever paired with a proper healer. B tier. Barrage Fortress relies on team synergy to deliver the wombo combo. His kit has vampirism qualities with life-stealing attacks based on max HP. He relies on teammates applying burns to take advantage of an extraordinary self-heal. A tier on a burn team, otherwise D tier. Raiden can be best described as a turn 1 nuker. He begins the fight with a degrading attack buff and an ability that does extreme bonus damage on the first round. His attack buff slowly becomes obsolete, but he can still hold his own afterwards. In general, it would be wise to use him for short fights. C tier. Alpha Wolf has a multi-hit with a nearly 2000% multiplier against a single target. When there's multiple enemies, you can expect this move to decimate large groups fairly easily. His defensive passive prevents him from being one-shot. Truly a multi-purpose, high-class attacker. A tier. So that's my first iteration of the Cyber of Life closed beta test tier list. All of us are still new to this amazing game, but I'm still happy to have even left an imprint of what the kits do on your mind, so for the next version, we'll be even more up to date and accurate. With that being said, please like and subscribe if you want to keep up with future updates, and I'll see y'all later, bye.